This morning, Kinefinity have announced their next camera, the Mavo Edge. We don't have a working camera to actually use yet. This is just an announcement. The camera is a good few months away yet, but this new camera from Kinefinity looks like it will be an incredibly exciting 8K large format cinema camera, which seems to simply build and improve upon everything that made their previous cameras so interesting. There's a lot to talk about and all we have right now is a press release, a spec sheet and some images, but there are some very exciting new features here which are definitely worth talking through. So let's dive right in. The sensor is a 36 by 24 millimeter full frame 8K CMOS sensor, which you can record in either ProRes or ProRes RAW. This is one of the first times we're seeing ProRes RAW inside a cinema camera, which is very exciting and going to be a big improvement in terms of workflow for current Kinefinity customers who are used to cinema DNG for their RAW recording. It has 14 plus stops of dynamic range and a dual native ISO of 800 and 3200. Just like on previous Kinefinity cameras, we have a lot of different frame rate options available. This is the spec chart directly from Kinefinity. There's obviously a lot going on here, so let's just highlight the key ones for now. But the first thing to highlight here is that all of these options, with the exception of the oversampling ones, can be recorded in either ProRes or ProRes RAW. So you don't have to compress that quality down when you're going for these high frame rate options. So full sensor width, 8K DCI can go up to 60 frames a second or 75 frames a second if you go for a wider aspect ratio. If you want to oversample that 8K sensor and shoot uncropped, but at 6K, 4K or 2K in ProRes, you can get up to 60 frames a second. If we start cropping into Super 35 millimeter, you can get 80 frames a second 6K or 96 frames a second 5K, which is an option that I'm very much looking forward to trying out. That could be a real sweet spot. There are lots of anamorphic options here as well, both full frame and Super 35 millimeter. And if we crop right into 2K wide for the max frames a second we can get from the camera, we hit 300 frames a second. It's not all about the numbers though. Kinefinity have almost completely redesigned the body of the camera. It still looks similar, but it's very different with a striking new carbon fiber enclosure, new control panel and screen, plus a completely new internal design and processing unit. The lens mount is the same Kine mount, which we know from the Mavo LF and Terra 4K. So you can use their mount adapters to go to E-mount, EF mount or PL mount. This time though, Kinefinity have managed to build their electronic ND system into the camera with the option to go clear, then engage and give you fine control between two and seven stops of ND. This is a big, big deal. It's gonna make a huge difference having that inside the camera instead of in the lens mount for operators. This new display area on the side offers much of the same functionality as the screen on the Mavo LF, but it's slightly bigger and able to display more information by the looks of these images. So, the physical control looked much better, but Kinefinity have also gone pretty heavy on wireless functionality, giving us control over the camera via built-in Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi on the antenna port on the back, gigabit ethernet, for streaming and camera control, plus a USB-C type socket, which from the looks of this small little line here on the spec sheet, can be cabled into an iOS phone to work with their app. This could be a hint that you can actually use your phone as a monitor and touchscreen control unit for the camera, which is a very interesting in idea indeed. I'm really looking forward to trying that out. For video outputs, we get two video ports on the front of the camera to use with their own monitors and EVF, plus two SDI ports on the back, but no HDMI port like there was on the previous cameras. These two SDI ports can now be set independently from the video port as well, so you can send a clean feed with a lookup table on it to the client while you're monitoring log, etc. in your viewfinder. 
they've changed the power options up a bit as well. We now have a V-Lock plate built directly onto the back of the camera and nestled inside of that is a horizontal Sony BPU style battery plate. This is the same style of batteries that they use inside their current side grip. So their own 45 watt hour grip bats will work with this. But because you're now not restricted by the physical dimensions of the side grip, you can use Sony BPU 30 and 60 or 90 batteries plus third party options from Swit, from Hawkwoods, IDX and the like. The other exciting new power option is actually part of the base plate that Movcam have made for the camera. The camera has some power pins underneath it, which this base plate uses to provide power from two Sony MPF 550 batteries. This isn't really designed as a way of powering the camera, but instead as a hot swap option with, you, you can see UPS here on the side of it, that stands for uninterruptible power supply. So this means you can change the V-Locks or the BPUs on the back of the camera without having to power down the camera. Very clever indeed. The last big change I want to talk about is the recording media. Now Kinefinity have always been very good at using non-proprietary media, but the 7mm SSD drives which they used on the previous cameras which is simply not fast enough with its SATA connection to handle the 8K, high frame rates, ProRes RAW, ProRes 444, and the new encoding methods that this camera needs. So instead, they've opted for NVMe M.2 SSD drives. These are still readily available as low cost third party options, but are much smaller and much faster. Because of this, we now get dual card slots on the camera, which lets us record the same clip simultaneously for redundancy, record proxies and H.264 onto a separate card, or do simple relay recording. Then making their own media, the Kinemag Nano, in 500 gigabytes or one terabyte options, as well as selling a Kinemag Nano enclosure. So you buy your own third party M.2 drives and use those to save some money if you'd like. So this is shaping up to be a very exciting new camera indeed from Kinefinity. And just like the Mavo LF before it, Kinefinity have managed to cram all of this into a tiny low cost camera. The Mavo Edge weighs only 1.2 kilograms. So only about 25 grams heavier than the Mavo LF and it will retail for 12,000 euros. The UK pricing will of course depend on the exchange rate nearer the time for us, but I think that is an incredible price for a camera that is this powerful with this many features. They're hoping to ship the camera by September and we've opened pre-orders at proev.co.uk, so speak to our sales team or head over to the website with the link down below if you want to secure your place in the queue. From what we've seen today, this could be a pretty fantastic little camera and give you a huge amount of value for money. But let me know what you think of the new Mavo Edge in the comments section down below. Can you see yourself using this for your own work? I really like to hear your thoughts on this, so please do leave your comments down below. And of course, I'll see you in the next one.